it's Megan. Welcome back to the channel. Glad y'all are here today. In today's video, come along with us and just spend the day with us. We got a lot going on. You know, spring has sprung, except it's still cold out here. But you just saw us moving our egg chickens and we do that. Well, we're about to get to once a week, but during the winter we do every two weeks um, for our pasture aged chickens. But next, y'all about to see some happy cows and horses because we're going to put them on some grass, y'all, finally. And uh, for those of you that may not know, they've been put up over here in what we call our sacrifice pasture for a few weeks now, just giving the grass a break. This was our winter pasture, so you can tell the grass is not nearly as tall as it should be, but our far end down there has been locked off for around five months. Um, so still not, still not perfectly tall, but they're going to enjoy it. So we're down on the back side of our pasture here, and you can see the grass down here, which you may not pick up on camera, the grass down here is in much better shape than the grass at the house. So Let's where it's the first move of the spring, you know, we've had to bring our troughs and everything back down here and uh, find all of our water hoses and all that good stuff. So it took us a few minutes, but we got to make sure they got, we can get our water down here. <laughs> That's our biggest challenge, I think, with moving these animals is uh, the water situation. But we figured it out, we'll make it work, don't we? Yeah, look, some of this grass is already starting to seed out, but then others, you know, it's still in short, what, six, eight inches, well, it's probably eight or 10 inches tall. Right. But it's just clumpy. There's a lot of weeds in this too. But um, yeah, our water hoses, we left down through here all year since last year. We had to track them down. They were buried up in the grass, but we found them. Now the question is, do they have holes in them? <laughs> the bigger question is, is the cows actually going to follow us down here? Oh, we'll get them down here. It might take us a few minutes. So typically when we first turn our cows out, they would be going straight into the pasture up there at the house. And that makes for an easy, you know, transition back into grass. But it's still, it's still way too short to be yeah. turning them on it. Me and Andy were just talking about it while we was waiting on this water to fill up. Um, so my milking situation is probably going to be a little difficult this evening because of the change, you know. And I'm going to have to come down here and catch Candy and walk her back to the barn. So, I think we're going to put them in this middle part. And that way she'll be a little closer and hopefully a little easier to catch. Fingers crossed. And, you know, more than likely after they get their few days out here, they're going to have to be put back up for a little while until all of our grass catches up. I'm going to say we got about a week on this right here. I think they can last till next weekend. Think so? I do. Especially... I'm thinking probably two, three days on this. And then over here, they can stay the rest of the week. I don't know. We'll see how quick they eat it yeah. down, I guess. So the thing is that I had to learn with this, uh, just to give you all a little tip, and Andy's better explain this than I am, but the grass tells you when to move your cows. So just cause such and such you see moves their cows every day, every week, so on and so forth in the same size pasture, you got to watch your grass. You look at the grass and the cows will tell you when they're ready to move too because they'll be wanting to get to the greener grass. So you just kind of have to keep an eye out and figure out what's best for you and your animals and your grass. That's the bad thing about overgrazing a pasture is overgrazing a pasture takes a long time to recover and get that grass back to what it ought to be. And our grass here still isn't what it ought to be. However, it's a lot better than it was last year about this time. That's right. And something else that hurt us, which I know you've heard us mention it in previous videos, is we got in a really bad drought about October. And y'all, our animals have been eating hay for over six months now because it killed, it killed the grass. Like it, yeah, it was bad. It was, it was really bad. So that really hurt us too as far as... Um, our pasture is growing out because this pasture, they were blocked off at that time from here and we just couldn't put them back over here because everything was dead. So it was pretty bad, wasn't it? It was. Look at this right here. You can see this ain't near as tall, which this is a different type of grass here. Did you see that ain't near as tall as the rest of it? And uh, That's what they'll eat first. Yeah, that right there is the tender, <laughs> good looking grass. Like They'll probably go right after that. But um, 
the tall steamy stuff, that's what they'll eat last. All right, y'all. This yep. is fixing to be the happiest moment of their lives right here. <laughs> you know, the fun part's going to be when we have to pull them off of that grass down there and bring them back up here. I know. They'll be mad. They're not going to want to come. Uh -uh. Look, especially Ty here. Poor old Ty, he's ready to go. Come on, boy. Come on. Come on, guys. Look at them. They said, oh my gosh, it's grass. They ain't gonna make it past the gate. <laughs> Come on, we y'all want to go to some good grass. Come on. Come on, y'all. Go on, cows. Go on. Come on, cows. Come on. Go, cows. Come on. Go, cows. Come on. Come on. <laughs> Come on. Come on, Bell. Come on. Come on. Come on, girl. That gate. Come on. Come on. Come on, girl. Come on. Come on. Tiger, she's going to get you. Come on. Come on. Come on, Belle. Go. So this is the bad thing about having friendly cows. <laughs> They're not too scared of you. Belle, this way. Come on. Go. Any other time, y'all darted straight for this gate. Come on. Go through the gate. Through the gate. Not the woods. The gate. <laughs> maybe, she just, maybe she'll see. Oh, Come she on. saw it's open. She got it. Come here. <laughs> Cookie, go. <laughs> they are on it. I knew this is how it was going to be. <laughs> boy, he is fast. Come on, boy. Tiger. <laughs> Come on. Look. Is everybody in here? Is there anything any prettier than seeing animals on fresh grass? Cookie, you are wide open. Tiger, you best not be down here running these cows around. You hear me. So next thing on the list is uh, getting this chicken tractor here to the top of the hill for our meat birds. I'll be moving them out probably tomorrow because uh, we got one more cold night ahead of us and then we should be okay and they should be big enough if we have any more cold nights after tonight or after this week that they should be, they should be fine. Um, but y'all know we show y'all real life around here and this is just us. But we keep saying this chicken tractor is going to last us another year another year. we've said that the last two years and here we are on year three and we're saying hopefully it will last us one another more, year one more year <laughs> how long have we used this one now five years was it 2019 i, I built it yeah yep five yeah. years this is year five so it's done pretty good considering it's pvc plastic i just hope it makes it to the top of the hill i know to where we need it I know. The worst broke part is that right there. I think I may take I may take something and try to brace that up a little bit. I don't know. But we gotta put another rope on it, that's for sure. But this one it is very dry rotted. It's very dry rotted and very short. I'll show them our wooden one over here. This one lasted us one year. It didn't even last a year before it broke. Well it was one season, like like a spring or we a raised fall. a batch of chickens in it and it tore all to pieces. Yeah. And it was heavy and I couldn't move it. Oh gosh, it, it was awful. It took both of us to move it. Um, 
And we had the wheels on it. Where yeah. are the wheels? They're on it somewhere. Are they still on it? Yeah. So yeah, they're buried up in the grass there. Just personal preference. PVC tricking tractor versus this wooden one. We'll take that PVC any yeah, day. Absolutely, because it was say it took me and Andy both, even with wheels, to move this wooden one. It was so, so heavy. And uh, that PVC one, I guess where the PVC is round on the bottom and we have such uneven ground here, it just slides right over. It just scoots right over. Now, occasionally I'll have a gap underneath that I have to like put a rock or something against, but, or I can just sit the feed trough against it. That usually works This too. one was the same way though, cause yeah. they're so big and where our ground's got holes and everything else in it, this one did the same way. Yep. This so. one was, it fell apart like immediately. Yeah, it did. And, and it it's treated lumber and... It wasn't the chicken tractor's fault. It was the lumber's fault. Right. It was some more of that junk store-bought lumber. Yep. Let's see but if we can get this thing to the top of the hill. Without it falling apart? Maybe. <laughs> Fingers crossed. You want to drag it by hand all the way up there? No. So, before... Uh, it, if anybody asks about this tractor... This is actually Stony Ridge Farmer's design. As far as I know, he's the only person on YouTube who has built one out of PVC like that. Like the original, I may be wrong about that. It may not be originally his design, but he's the one we got the idea from. And so we followed his instructions to build it. And we do like it. I mean, it's, it's, it's easy to work with. Yeah, and it's easy to move. Well, it looks like we're going to be putting a rope on it before we get to the top of the hill, ain't it? So this right here was an old tow rope that we had. Let's go find a rope. All right. I hope we got one. I hope so too. So we found us some strap in here. I think this will work. Um, you may wonder why we don't put it on the bottom run because that would make it a lot easier to pull because as you pulled, it would sort of pick up the front end. But um, we did have it on the bottom run until it broke. <laughs> That's that, that broke like two years ago. <laughs> yeah, and that was something that was our fault. I think we were pulling it with the Kubota. And we hit a rock. And, and we hit a rock and yeah. it caught it. So that actually broke because of us. So we have to put it on the top one now because once again, we are just piecing this thing together to get us by until something changes. It's just what we do. <laughs> yeah. It still serves its purpose well, it's just tore all to pieces. So Grandpa will be proud of me right now because this was the way Grandpa fixed things. Because it was just always rigged together just enough that it would get him by for one more year. <laughs> Then it gives you another year to figure out if you're gonna have time to build something else. Well, I think like we said, we're we're gonna get to the point where we got to. Tongue on a rock. That must have been what broke it. It must have got hung on something. All right. Let's hook back up and try it again. All right. We made it. It made it to the top of the hill one more time. <laughs> Usually that's the hardest part because it catches rocks and stuff and we're trying to pull it up here. Hopefully since it made it up here, it'll make it through me another run of chickens because that's the hardest part is getting it up here. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, some of y'all are going to say, well, why in the world don't you just go ahead and build another one? Well, literally that was the plan this winter. But my goodness, how time has flew this winter. And I feel like we've been wide open all winter long working on stuff. 
I guess you could say that this was one of the ones that was sort of on the back burner list to do this winter. Yeah, you know, it don't have to, like, I know it looks like super bad, but like I said just a minute ago, it serves the purpose, it works. That's, I mean, if it'll work for a few more weeks, that'll save us a little money for a little longer. <laughs> I think it'll get us through this batch of chickens because the tin is holding everything together. Holding everything together, and that right. tin's strong. Right. But um, I think it's going to be just fine. And you know, that's the thing about it is, th so that's kind of how we, or at least how I like to roll anyways, is, you know, for me, it's hard to put this at the top of the priority list because it only grows 50 to 100 chickens a year. And we've got other things that are a lot more pressing that need to be taken care of, need to be done. And so we sort of prioritize those. And then little things like this, I'm like, you know, in the back of my mind, I'm like, well, that's going to work if we just keep working with it. And so it will get to the point, though, where we just have to replace it. Yep, just going to have to bite the bullet. If we were out here making a living with our chickens, it'd be different. It would be a different story. We would, it would be justifiable to go ahead and spend the time and the money and everything else into building new trick chicken tractors and keeping them, you know, top priority. However, as long as that thing right there keeps our chickens safe and works to grow 50 to 100 chickens, it works. That's right. And that's something else, like she just said, that we don't have to spend money on for that much longer. But the time is coming. <laughs> it is definitely coming. <laughs> Before we leave from this thing today, there's one more thing I want to mention about this. If you do go build one for yourself, um, I highly recommend using this hardware cloth versus the chicken wire. If you see there, under the hardware cloth, we have chicken wire. And that's what we done our first batch or two of chickens with. And we found out real quick that wasn't going to work for us because those little meat chickens would gather in the corner and then sometime during the night, a coon would come up here and a coon can fit their paw right through that chicken wire. And they would just pop their heads off. I mean, they couldn't get them out to eat them. They would just kill them. And so- We lost several. Yeah, we lost about half of them one night. Yeah. In one mm -hmm. night. And uh, so, like I said, we learned real quick that that chicken wire was not going to work for us. And so on the back side here, of course, this one, it, every one of them wouldn't be this way, but for some reason, this back piece of PVC has always been bowed upward. And uh, it's been that way ever since we built it. So when we done the chicken, I mean, done the hardware cloth on it, we left sort of a tail back here that drags the ground. And uh, that helps seal it off to where if a coon comes up here, he's like, oh, I can't get under that now, you know, because he runs into all this first. And so far it's worked for us. But that's why we also have this tail on here that sort of drags the ground. And the um, crazy thing to me is most things you see for chicken tractors tell you to put chicken wire. They do. And even uh -huh. on the Stony Ridge Farmer's design, he uses chicken wire on his, and I guess it works for him, but it didn't work for us. Yep. The um, holes are too big. Yeah, they, the, the coons, they, they tore us up. And that was especially why they were little chickens. And they, just, they would just bundle up in the corner. And instead of sleeping out there in the middle where nothing could get to them, they'd all huddle up in a corner and it was, yeah, it got bad. Well, I guess that's all we need to do for that today. We'll do the rest tomorrow when we move them out. All right. Well, guys, I got to get some more butter made. I've got about three and a half gallons of milk here, and that's what I usually get up to uh, before I make butter. Number one, I hate washing that food processor, so I try to wash it as little times as possible. But right now, I'm on a record of making butter about every three days uh, while we're getting a gallon a day. I know that that sounds like a lot of butter, and I am making a ton of butter right now, but you gotta get while the getting's good. So even if I don't feel up to making butter, I'm gonna make butter because there's gonna come a day that we're gonna be relying on our frozen butter versus um, having fresh butter because you're not, or at least here anyway, we don't always have a cow in milk. Candy's definitely a butter cow though. She's got some great, great cream. I want y'all to check this out when I tell you that Candy is a butter cow. Watch this.
Looks like vanilla ice cream. That is some high quality cream right there, y'all. Make some really good butter. Into the food processor it goes. That'll be enough to make us a good cake right there. We're gonna have butter here in just a minute. So we're at the whipped cream stage. I can just tell by the way it sounds. So there's whipped cream if we want to stop there. Ain't that cool, yo? So we're gonna hit it one more time and we should have butter in a second. And you can tell it's broke now because see how it's splashing? So we've got butter because it went from thick to now we can see the milk there in the top. So this is what your butter's gonna look like. See there, you can see the buttermilk and the butter. So we gotta get that out of there. So I'm trying to give it a squeeze before I put it in my ice water to get some of that milk out. Of course, it's not gonna all come out doing it that way, but we'll at least get some of it out. You wanna squeeze as much of that milk out as you can. It'll just help your butter keep longer. We're gonna rinse it under some cold running water. Add us a little salt. You gotta make kind of fast work of this because you can see it's already wanting to start melting, so. And we're gonna get that on our pan. It works just as good doing it this way. I'll just save my butter mold for decoration. I'll let that cool in the fridge and then I'll stick it in the freezer. Now I'm just bringing a bale of hay down here to these calves. Um, I guess I'm just going to leave it sitting outside here because we're not supposed to be getting any rain for the next several days. Give them a little something to munch on there. And we're going to take this other bale over here to the pig lot because we're getting pigs tomorrow. And I need to fix them a bed and everything inside their house. So we've already got the uh, water trough there. I've got it in here. I got their feed trough. And then I have this feeder, which still has some feed in it. So I kind of need to get that cleaned out too before we get our new pigs. But I'm going to scatter some hay in here so they can have uh, some nice bedding to well to stay warm in because it's still fairly cool and just have some nice bedding to sleep in i don't have to do much scattering because them pigs 
they're going to do just about all the scattering we need to do. Just give it in there so they've got something to work with. And now we need to get this feed that's down in the feeder out. This totally should have been done right after we got rid of our pigs. But like everything else, it didn't. What that feed does is it'll set up down there in the bottom from I guess their saliva and everything else. And it'll get kind of nasty and funky down there in the very bottom. And it'll eventually rot out your feeder if you don't do something about it. I believe this is the worst mine's ever been. Look at that. All this feed here will probably get thrown away. I don't know. I may throw it into the chickens and let them peck through it. But where it's got that, where it's just set up in there, I may just throw it down a hill. It's an all too familiar sound. Hearing the, hearing the lids on the feeder slap. That's how you know the pigs is out here chowing down. But so what I'll do to begin with here is where these pigs are learning. Um, I will tie these lids open so they know where their feed is, and it doesn't take them but a few days to realize they gotta they gotta lift their nose up or lift that up with their nose and get in there to get the feed. So that's something else we've got to do today. Is me and Daddy's got to grind hog feed today. And we got to sack some cow feed that's right now in the grinder. So after lunch here, we're going to be pretty busy. But anyways, at least this is done now. Right there's all of our old feed. Like I said, I might take that up there and let the chicken scratch through it. I don't think it'll hurt them. But we'll go do that right now and see what they do. I don't think it's old feed to hurt them pigs. I mean, these chickens, do you? <laughs> there you go. Y'all have a scratching party. I can't believe I'd let that feeder get like it was. It was that deep inside of there with the old rotten feed. So we just got done grinding feed and uh, this ought to last a little while here. The pigs, when they're little, they don't seem to eat quite as much or they don't eat near as much as they do when they get bigger. But I'll show you here in just a minute what our homemade feed looks like. I like to just set it down in these 50 gallon drums that really helps keep the rats out of it or mice or anything else that might get in it. Squirrels. So, went ahead and poured some in the feeder. And that's mainly ground up corn. Um, ground up shelled corn right there. We put some soybean meal and what they call hog supplement in it and then uh, minerals and stuff like that. I believe that's a piece of a mineral. Yeah, that's a sunflower seed. With this move, not only is it going to be different for the cows, I'm trying to figure out <laughs> my routine too, and that'll take a 
take a few days because I've had all my feed and stuff up under the barn, but now I have still come down here and feed my horses um, and give the other cows a little bit of food so I can hopefully catch candy. So This might be interesting. We're going to see how it goes. Hopefully it'll go just fine, but it's going to mess them up too because we're all out of routine now at this point. <laughs> Come on. Come on. Come on. Woo, cows. All candy's coming. Come on, candy. There. Got it. Good girl. Hey, my girl. Good job. Good job. Hey. Good job. Look here. Look here. Good job. It's okay. You're okay. Now. Good job, got, man. We got to walk all the way back to the barn. This. I know. The bad thing is this has got to be an everyday routine now while they're down here. Well, it's okay. I don't mind. I know you don't. Come on. Now. Come on. Come on, Candy. Come on, girl. Hey. Come on. Come on. Now, good girl. Good girl. Cookie's all right. Right there she is. Come on. You're okay. All right. Come on. Come on. Let's go. Now you know this part. This part is no different than it's been. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on, baby. Here. There it is. Come on. Come on. Come on, mama. Come on. There you go. We Good are. job. There it is. There she is. Took a little bit, but we made it to it, didn't you? Yep. The unfortunate thing is that right there goes to show you how much routine matters. <laughs> yeah, that's right. But she'll get on this routine and it'll be all right. It's a change for all of us, so. Come on. Now you've been doing good. Come on. <clears throat> good job. Now. Good girl, Candy. Good girl. See, we're going to make it through this. Good job. It just messes everybody up, don't it? Think so? Boy, she's a whole lot easier to go back than she was to get up here, ain't she? Yeah. Come on. Good there, Candy. Cookie's still out there. She waited on you. Go. She didn't go anywhere. Well, guys, it's been an eventful, uh, tiresome day. It's been a busy day. <laughs> um, but, you know, like we said in the beginning, spring has sprung and it's just the way it is. And anyways, we hope y'all really enjoyed today's video. Hope y'all might have learned just a little something. And be sure to say hello down in the comments. We love to hear from y'all. And anyways, well, we and see. Hopefully on the next video, they're going to be seeing some new pigs. That's right. That's right. Yes. I'm so excited about going to get the pigs. <laughs> I, I love too. pigs. I miss them when they're not here. I'm getting excited too. Um, it's just hard to believe it's time already, but I'm, I'm ready for them. That's right. But anyways, guys, till we see y'all on the next one, y'all have a good one. See y'all later.